I'm powerlifting and using conjugate. Still don't fully get how to implement accessories. Uh, do you waive them? Do max effort day uh, accessories differ from dynamic effort days? Sets and reps, just kind of a basic outline of accessories for, for uh, conjugate training. Okay, I'm going to skim this one because I think we have this is one of the long, longer form topics on mm -hmm. a future podcast. So another reason to subscribe to the channel and to subscribe to or the podcast, right? Yep. Is that what you do with the podcast? Yeah. We're still figuring that out because I, this really does need a deep dive mm -hmm. into the, the structure of a training day, right? And I was considering doing it on this, but it is, it is a bigger conversation. So what I this skim the surface while say is when you're looking at training days, right? Because I did the the the, the, the programming mm -hmm. podcast, which was episode I'm gonna guess sixty three, right? If they don't know, go look. It's yeah. called programming deep dive. So that was more of a broad overview. On a smaller overview, let's just break it down. Say you have bodybuilding, and then you have strength training. Mm -hmm. You have those two different things. The way that I like to look at this and just follow me here is you have in strength training, every session matters. In bodybuilding, all sessions matter. Now, I get, I just said the same thing, right? But I really didn't. What I'm saying here is in strength training, each session has, it's, it's, a, it's an analytical tool. It's a weak point development tool. It's a technical training tool. There's a lot of things in there that make each one of those sessions really important very important so in isolation that one session can make a big difference mm -hmm. you know we see that with the train your ass off in the seminars that we do we can bring people out for one session make some corrections and it makes a big difference one session makes a huge difference so every session matters right and bodybuilding one session alone doesn't make that much difference all sessions is what makes the difference yep. You know, so consistency matters in everything, but one of it has to be looked as almost more like an endurance event to make it very, very loosely defined. And the other one kind of like a sprint. So if you think about it that way, that helps when you're looking at that training day. So now when you're looking at the training day for strength, and that's where we're going to go here, you have the first couple exercises, which are going to be your main exercise. But this is before warm ups and activation mm -hmm. drills or whatever shit they want to do. So I start the session at the main movement. Some things can happen before there. You know, there's, you know, warm ups, activation. Everybody's got their little things that they need to do or want to do or don't want to do. After that main session becomes the second exercise, which I call a supplemental exercise. That exercise should specifically address the weak point of that lift that's being trained on that day. So if it's a squat and that weak point happens to be upper back, that exercise there should be addressing that weak point. How do you know what that weak point is? Well, you can have a coach. I mean, there's, there's resources online. There's EliteFTS.com has got thousands of articles. It's a good place to start. There, there's ways to look at that. So overview looking at that, you can, you can drop exercises in there that should be done based upon the, the weak point that you think you have. Or if you don't know what it is, just assume that it's either hamstrings or, or back, you know, for the squat deadlift and assume that it's going to be triceps for the, the bench. Mm -hmm. Broad assumptions, I understand, but it's going to cover the majority of the people. The way I look at that is if I see a weak point that day on a lifter, I'm going to address it on the main lift. We're going to address it right next, yep. right now. Right, not the next week. We're not going to wait till the next mesocycle, the next microcycle. We're going to address it right now. So that exercise then, that supplemental exercise, actually is dependent upon what happened in that first exercise, the main exercise. If the main exercise is super, super draining, that supplemental is going to be changed. It may even be pulled out because mm. this was too much. If this looks so, it, you're going to see where I'm going here. So that second exercise, that supplemental exercise, is generally going to be trained in a more of a strength rep base so threes to fives generalizations and that should wave based upon the skill set of the lifter the more advanced it's probably going to have to change every week if they're not as advanced they're going to need one week for i will just call it skill acquisition right. go back to the other podcast yep so a week to kind of get used to it then another week if it's three to fives another week that 
you know, push hard on those three to fives, whatever the rep range is going to be. Maybe it can be five, but then the next week it's going to be three. You have to still have some type of progressive overload built in there. Absolutely. Uh, most if I'm programming or recommending something for somebody, I'm going to not have that exercise be the same for more than three or four weeks. It's going to change out. I would like to see it change out every week because if, if you're paying attention and you're watching that weakness that's going to be shown on that first exercise is going to be different each week. Sometimes that weak point just is activation. And so it's just getting the body to learn to do what it's supposed mm -hmm. to do. Sometimes it's a real muscle weakness. After that supplemental exercise, which is the second exercise, it could be the two and three. There, I have an article called Supplemental Exercises, and there's a lecture that's on YouTube mm -hmm. that is about an hour long just on this topic. That you could, they you could speak at. for another hour on that too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I could go a whole day on just that. I'm trying to do this in a concise way, and I'm already failing. <laughs> but now I think we're getting to what the question is, mm -hmm. the accessories. And this is what I think they're talking about. Those accessory exercises are going to fall into two different categories. They're going to fall into exercises that need to be done to make the supplemental exercise better. So let's say the supplemental exercise Keep in mind that exercise is the one to build the main exercise. Let's say it's the JM press. One exercise is going to make the JM press bigger because the truth is you have to do exercises outside of the main exercise to make the main exercise better, which most agree on that. Not everybody, but most agree on that. Then that, if they're going to agree on that, then they have to agree on where well, you have to do other exercises to be able to make the supplemental exercise better, right? So this is trickling down. So that, that's the, what I look at first. What is the exercise we're trying to build, right? So an example would be Adam, it was the upper back with the suspended good mornings. And I failed miserably on how that was programmed, but it happens. So because of exactly what I'm talking about, what exercises were being done to make that better, right? By skipping that, that ended up working in a not the best way. Right. So I, I don't know. It's not in a negative way, but it's not the best way. It could have been more optimal if exercises were, now they were, now they are, yep. but I had to remove the supplemental exercise to put in the exercises to make that exercise better. Yep. Right? Is everybody confused now? I mean, they're, they're, yeah, okay, all right. All right, so that's, that's one way to look at it, mm. right? That's how I like to look at it, but that's going to take more experience and a little bit more thought to be able to do. The other way to look at it is let's just look at this as a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. So what muscle groups do you want to train on that day? So they're going to be muscle groups that are going to be associated with that lift. So if it's a bench press, it's going to be lats, it's going to be triceps, it's going to be shoulders. And then you put that stuff in there. How to wave it. it, it I don't want to say it doesn't matter because you can just do it in a very inconsistent way and it will work, right? Just random way would be called, um, what, muscle confusion principle, yeah. you know, um, chaos training there, there's actually cybernetic training there's a lot of different yeah. names for the same thing but i think there needs to be some kind of thought process put mm -hmm. into it so if it's the bodybuilding the, now these exercises if the person is a person that thrives on consistency and doesn't like change then these exercises you're going to want to keep the same for a longer period of time because they don't thrive very well you know, everybody is driven by different things. Some people are driven by certainty. Some people uncertainty. Some people, you know, just leave it there because that's what supplies here. Um, so you got to kind of feel that out a little bit. If they're driven by certainty and you're changing that exercise all the time, you're going to confuse them. And that this is not that important in the over global overview of a program to create uncertainty. You know, the, you can tr create trust, which is going to allow more compliance with uh, the other movements above that. Now, if they like uncertainty, randomness, I don't like doing, I personally don't like doing the same thing all the sure. time. So then those exercises can change because it's a, thousands of exercises that can fulfill that same role. Um, but they do still need to progress in some type of overload fashion. So either try to increase the reps or the weight you know, or the sets or the volume over that block, that period of time. And it's going to be a longer, this is where things get confusing when we talk about blocks and conjugate, right? Because the, the 
some of the main movements may cycle in one to three weeks if it's max effort if it's dynamic it could be three to five so that's going to have their own block where the supplemental exercises may rotate in different time frames so they're not going to have the same three to five week block it may right. be two weeks two weeks two weeks two weeks these accessories that we're talking about these higher end accessories for people that like certainty this may not change for five or six weeks so now you're trying to organize this block and you're wondering why is this five weeks why is this two weeks why is it well this be it's conjugate right. it's the word means coupling yep. that's the whole point of conjugate periodization and then the lower you go in the training day you know the deeper you go or the the more exercises deep you go into the training day the longer that exercise can stay the same so you get down to the end of the training which is usually when the um, i don't want to say the i'm well, let's just say the very unexciting things the right yes yeah, uh, so for a lot of people this could be where the planks come in the mm -hmm. bird dogs come in the ab works come in some people it's reverse hypers it's, it's the shit that comes in that you really need to do but you don't want to do it's like the vegetables yeah and i yeah. think a lot of that sometimes is because it's towards the end of the workout, so you're mm -hmm. tired, you just want to kind of be done. But I think a lot of it is also because these exercises stay the same for so long. Mm -hmm. And they can, because their adaptation is a different type of adaptation than what you're looking for in the front end. The reps are higher, the effort's not as hard. We're more about activization, internal stability, those type mm -hmm. of things. And that is boring as all hell. But the exercises can still change, right? It's it doesn't always have to be this type of plank. There's, so there's oh, tons yeah, of planks, right? There's tons of lower back stability, internal stability, external. That, now there's a lot more knowledge out there about that. Mm. So now that's easier to find different exercises to rotate through compared to what it was a decade ago. Where a decade ago, it's like, okay, reverse hypers, pull down abs, <laughs> planks yeah well what else you're supposed to just fuck it do that yeah just keep going going with those well that was kind of the mindset though too it's like fuck it yeah we have to do it you just do it just mm -hmm. get it over with but what i think's happened over a period of time is that's been exposed as being an area that needs better development and training and it does mm -hmm. and it's also become an area where people started to realize people stop doing this they start just doing the main movement maybe one other thing and then just bolt the hell out of there and that works, it's a type of programming, but that's not gonna work if it's conjugate or a lot of other types of programming. Right. So those repetitions on those exercises, a lot of times are gonna be time-based, they're gonna be tension-based. Mm -hmm. So I can't sit here and say they're gonna be higher repetitions of 15 or 20 if we're talking about a plank, right? And they're gonna be holding it for five, 10, 15. They're, but there's still gonna be that progression mm -hmm based upon the skill set. You're not gonna progress a plank that's gonna start looking good for three seconds, and then two weeks later look like shit at 10. Right. You know, you go from three seconds to four, it's the same thing. Absolutely, that progression needs to be in there. Yes. Sure. And that would be a very <laughs> concise. That was a shorter, more concise than I was anticipating. That was really good.